the prayer. Uh, would anyone like to lead us? Uh, Taisha, are you comfortable? Yes, I can. Yes, please. Thanks. Father, we thank you so much for another class in the prophetic and the apostolic. We thank you so much that we are learning to tap into the apostolic and the prophetic veins. We thank you for your outpouring as we quiet our hearts and listen to your leading as, as, as Pastor Nancy, as your instructor, Father, download from heaven insights, Father, as we divine revelation, as we learn and we hunger for more, Father, develop our hunger for your word and also for the prophetic and, and the apostolic, Father. We thank you so much. Direct us, Father, lead and direct us as we go in our studies. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Thank you. Thank you, Aisha. And welcome, uh, class. Thank you for connecting on this call. Um, we've been learning about the apostolic and just getting introduced to what it looks like in the New Testament. So uh, we saw how the apostles of uh, the early church had certain functions um, that were common. And it was dependent on the requirements at that time. So we saw them uh, teach God's word. We saw them um, strength, plant local churches, strengthen local churches. We saw them providing uh, church governance, administration to various churches. Uh, they also moved in signs, wonders, miracles. They were willing to expand into new territories. Uh, and then there was also persecution that came against them. So you know, these are all the experiences of the early church apostles. Um, we, we, there, from there in the New Testament, we begin to look at the names of several people who are called as apostles. We know that, you know, Paul, Peter, the uh, apostles of the Lamb are very significant in the first century church. Uh, later on, you have names like uh, Barnabas, uh, also Andronicus, Junia, you know, Silas, Timothy, Titus, all these names mentioned, and they're also called as apostles. Okay, so they were ministering in, in various ways during their given time and season. So characteristics of the apostolic ministry, that's what we're trying to understand. And that is why we needed this base from scripture uh, uh, on what the apostolic looks like. Um, so the characteristics of the apostolic ministry, we concluded that there is no set formula that God gives every individual. Each individual is different. The uh, emphasis you know on on the on the particular kind of characteristic for uh, any individual will depend on their assignment and that is why we must not uh, box god up and expect that the apostolic will always appear to be you know a certain kind uh, then we went on to just you know explaining the apostolic a little further and we said that we observe that people were sent to um, communities people were sent to regions in the new testament people were also sent to specific um, uh, you know like a set of people or people groups so that's how we when we say territories, it may not refer to physical, you know, geographical locations as such, but it could also mean, for example, you know, I mentioned that uh, God called Paul as an apostle of faith to the Gentiles. So it's a people group and a community. So he went about ministering to this group, <coughs> excuse me, wherever you know, they were dispersed. So it was a people group that he was um, uh, primarily primarily called to so in the same way now why are we why are we talking about this because as we understand the apostolic in our uh, modern times we need to recognize that an apostle is not just about a geographical region okay or a geographical territory but we'll come to that a little later 
then uh, we also saw how um, there is a distinct work or a distinct function that each apostle puts in um, as the Lord leads them. So, you know, uh, Paul wrote about Apollos who um, he planted and Apollos watered the Corinthian church. So there was a f particular function that Paul performed after which he had opened it up for other leaders to come in and take charge. But his intention was to strengthen the church. He never really abandoned the church of Corinth. Uh, so he played his role and then you know he kind of uh, went forward from there. So the apostolic, we would notice that everyone performs their distinct work as per God's assignment. Then God sets open doors and open territories for the gospel. We see, you know, Paul talking about this. Uh, he also asks the believers to pray that doors may be open for the ministry. Uh, we know that God set aside Paul and Barnabas into the uh, missionary sort of uh, ministry where they were going from city to city, uh, establishing the kingdom of God. So the open doors and obviously when we are going uh, into new territory, there is always that opening which is required after which comes the, uh, you know, taking over with with the uh, the the truth of the kingdom and you know all the other things that would take place so that the opening is very important so open opening new doors having these doors open we see this in the um new testament and similarly you know in in our times today we will talk about what open doors really mean then we we see that uh, the apostles were gifted with supernatural power of god so uh, they were gifted with the gifts of the Holy Spirit, and they ministered with those gifts. Uh, we've also seen you know, early on in the book of Acts how great signs and wonders were done through the hands of the apostles. So we find that God ministers or God releases his power in, in this manner through the apostles. So apostles uh, would also through their life give witness to the supernatural power of God in a very extraordinary way. Then equipped with revelatory gifts of the spirit. So Paul, you know, is a wonderful example. God gave him revelation um, to, to write up, you know, most of the New Testament. And similarly, even today, we can expect revelatory uh, gifts to operate. But then, you know, I, I already told us that uh, it is not, the scriptures are already set in place. So we're not expecting new scriptures or a different interpretation of scriptures. But what we are expecting is the depth of the word, you know, the given truth of God's word. Um, I, uh, I've heard someone say this. It's, it's like uh, God's word. Uh, it's when you, every... I mean, just for the sake of our understanding, if you want to take every verse or even a word in uh, the the Bible, let's say salvation, you know, the way we understand it is, uh, it's like a bucket, okay, or even an ocean. It's a, it's like an ocean. Just that one truth of God's word. When we first learn about it, the truth is established in our minds, you know, and we and we know. Uh, what what is the right interpretation of that uh, particular word or scripture from the Bible? But you know, as you keep coming back to the same word or the same verse or the same passage, the kind of revelation that God provides is like all the water in the ocean. You, know, you could you can never really exhaust. You can keep going back to that one word, salvation throughout you know uh, a lifetime and discover something fresh you know discover something deeper discover something you know i i use the word new very uh, uh, cautiously because we don't mean uh, 
a new interpretation that's not what we are referring to but what we are saying is basically the depth of the revelation keeps increasing and uh, the way god's word is you know there's no end to the uh, revelation that it captures so in today's apostolic that's what we can expect we can expect the scriptures are set in their place but we can expect depth of god's word to uh, be you know opened up to the people through those who are anointed with the apostolic uh, anointing then uh, equipped with strong leadership and administration capacity so that um, is understandable because we seen the apostles in the book of acts govern instruct guide the local churches and that continued you know throughout the uh, um, new testament and so this ability of administration we also see that you know this is a gift that god gives even administration is part of the grace gifts that god provides uh, and this is upon the an apostolic anointing and this really means you know the word government if you look it up in uh, 1 corinthians 12:28 uh, it is from the greek word called kuber which means to steer pilot or direct and you know that's what uh, an apostolic leader does isn't it provides direction provides vision uh, and leads the people because someone has to someone has to talk about the end result someone has to talk about the goal and that's when the people can move towards that goal uh, and so the apostolic has that feature they they will they will begin to steer people or they will begin to direct people in the in the um, in what god is leading you know at at that given time uh then governmental authority over churches so this means um a capability of leading or a leadership anointing if you want to call it that way so once the churches were positioned you know we noticed that paul always had some or the other uh Guy, uh, guidance to give them you no know, he wrote to the corinthian church he wrote to them about uh, theological matters he wrote to them about lifestyle uh, issues he wrote to them about um, you know community matters how do you how do you um, uh, interact with one another how do you live in a godly community how do you address sin so there is a requirement for proper government Okay, uh, government or the running, the running of the uh, the fellowship of believers, and not just running. It's more about strengthening because uh, what we are all working towards, or the fivefold ministry offices are working towards, is the maturing of the people of God for them to uh, come to the perfect man. You know, as Ephesians four thirteen says. So, uh, in the governing that the apostolic anointing undertakes, their efforts will be towards strengthening. towards um growing maturing the local churches so that is a feature that we will um uh, see so sir if you could break that down you know how how does governing look uh we saw that you know the apostles in in um uh, acts they appointed leaders so wherever it was required you know they they put in place leaders so that uh, things will be done in an orderly way and you know there will be um, people to take charge uh, and and you know lead others under them so lead appointing local leadership is a, a very important role uh, in governance uh, also establishing divine order divine order would refer to you know different aspects of what they would address how worship should be you know in a local church um so they would address how um, uh community should be like if you just take for example peter you know peter writes to uh, some some of the local churches in his uh, epistles and he talks about honoring government he talks about honoring leadership he talks about you know honor in the marriage he talks about uh, being hospitable being uh, loving uh, living a life that is um, uh, more righteous than the than the uh, you know other people Uh, around them because you know they they were the believers in in those cities and they had to set an example they needed to represent the kingdom of god so you know he addresses all these matters and you know this is like 
the divine order that God is expecting. Christian life, Christian fellowship should be like this. These are the standards. This is how the sin should be addressed. So the standards, the divine standards which are required for uh, the Christian life, the apostles have, uh, have uh, you know, a, 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 a deposit in them to actually look into these matters and deal with these matters and you know set things in place uh, because that's how you know god wants it then authority to bring correction you know again you know we see uh, paul do this uh, time and again the uh, um, example of the Corinthian church is also before us when there is somebody who sins uh, and he is caught up in uh, sexual immorality and Paul had to address it and he actually told the leaders of the church how to deal with this person initially uh, because you know this individual was not ready to listen they had to be very uh, very strict uh, in their dealings and then once there was repentance you know he talks about how um, uh, this person could be brought back and you know th that they could express their love to this individual again so you know there there is correction that that uh, apostles will bring forth um, and uh, yeah that's a good thing because you know imagine if uh, there was no uh, direct feedback on you know uh, the right and the wrong we would all just keep doing our own things and the churches would be going in their own um, you know sweet direction and you we wouldn't we wouldn't really be working towards a goal, which is to become more like Jesus. But the apostolic anointing um, has this feature where the apostles are intentional about uh, uh, ensuring the standards of, of God, the standards of God's word in every aspect of a believer's life and also uh, church life. So if something is uh, amiss, they will, they will address, that they will bring correction. Mm. So that is also something that uh, the apostolic does. Then responsibility toward and care for the churches. Obviously, we uh, see that a lot in the way Paul talks about different churches. You know, he uh, writes about uh, praying for these churches. Um, you know, and uh, uh, we know that early early on, uh, the uh, twelve apostles, the Jerusalem uh, leadership, they they were very keen on helping people with material needs and you know churches that were in need at that time uh, were also helped in fact there was an offering which was collected uh, and sent to people in need so there's a lot of care so you could look at uh, the apostolic anointing and apostles uh, as those who are um, in oversight over the churches of god a church and uh, the apostolic is about more churches actually so uh, the churches of god and in oversight they ensure you know that things are done very much in order so uh, they take care of the churches uh, they are also involved in the ministry of the word so quite a few apostles that we see in the new testament uh, paul peter um, john james all of these people also taught god's word so we see that teaching can be a part of the apostolic anointing. Okay, and uh, why why are the teaching again the same goal to strengthen the local churches in the things of God? Uh, apostles prayed for the local churches. Mm, they uh, imparted and activated spiritual gifts. So there are several scriptures. Every every statement that I'm making, uh, there are scriptures based on which I'm making these statements. It's here in our notes. If we uh, are to if we were to go through every, each of these uh, passages, you know, we will not be able to complete uh, our class or our course in time. And that's the reason, you know, I'm not um, getting us to read the verses, but I would encourage you to please go back and uh, look up these verses, you know, uh, and, and it'll be really helpful uh, to see um, how we've come to these conclusions. Okay. Um, they were involved in reaching the lost, proclaiming the gospel, Again, you know, we, we know that uh, they sought open doors. Why open doors? So that more people, new people could hear the gospel about the Lord Jesus Christ. And, um, you know, then once they heard, you know, people would be saved. There'll be a, a community of believers in, in, in a particular city. 
and then they would begin to work on strengthening that body of believers that's how they function they were also involved in relating with apostles and elders so uh, you know paul and barnabas is a, it's a good example the way barnabas dealt with paul and later on he introduced paul to the uh, the leaders in, in jerusalem we also see how paul interacted with the leaders in the church of ephesus so he um instructs them before he parts with them uh, so you know the apostolic has um, this burden for strengthening the leadership they want to make sure that leaders are are uh, encouraged leaders are well equipped in god's word leaders are uh, sufficiently instructed so that they know how to uh, lead the churches where god has planted them um and uh, the apostles um, you know we talked about persecution earlier so there are some references uh, here in our notes that also talk about taking part in the sufferings of apostleship so apostleship you know comes along with um sufferings okay so um obviously you know if someone is leading from the front they have to be the first ones to take um, you know any any form of opposition that might rise against the people of god so it comes with uh, sufferings um and in the interaction among leadership uh, the apostles can also be seen like fathers because they have that they have that feature or that tendency so a uh, paul if you again go back to the life of paul and you uh, consider all the people that he was working with um you'd notice that he was intentional he was intentional about who um whom he chose for uh, tasks and um, uh, even after you know they were appointed um he was keen on seeing them flourish to their fullness so timothy is is a wonderful example you know timothy as a young boy uh, in lystra he found him there and he took him along uh, on his uh, missionary journeys but then uh later on we see paul addressing timothy as the um uh, pastor of of a church and uh, you know how did that happen how did timothy go from being just a believer to discovering the purposes of god for his life discovering the grace discovering the anointing and being mentored in those things obviously you know uh, he needed someone uh, to guide him in. in this case paul was there uh, very much there and uh, uh, paul fathered timothy right and that's why he even calls timothy as uh, my son so the apostles uh, have this feature of being fathers and mothers or uh, not just you know we are trying to understand the what the apostles did in the new testament but this is also so that we can understand what is part of the apostolic anointing in itself because when we go further it's not all going to be about the office of the apostle so similar to the prophetic that we've learned so far you know there is an office of the prophet and we know that you know there is uh, the release of the uh, gifts of revelation and uh, you know all of that calling for the word of god but the same features are also found in the grace gift of the prophetic uh, it, it is seen at a different level in the prophesying believer but overall overall it is a part of the prophetic anointing so similarly we have seen the functions of the apostles in the early church in the new testament now these are features that are a part of the apostolic so i'm using the word apostolic which will uh, include the the office of the apostle it will include the apostolic anointing which is upon believers again you know we can see that not just at the level of the believers but even at a ministry level we might find that some um ministers are very apostolic 
okay which means you know they they find new territory they um uh they uh, they provide leadership you know to to other leaders uh, in the body of christ they're not apostles but their ministry can be very apostolic okay so we're trying to use one term for all these levels of uh, you know people and all these levels uh, of functioning with the apostolic anointing as just the apostolic okay so um uh, that will be very helpful if we remember so it's not just about the apostolic uh, office but it is also about you know the the way believers function all right so uh, i don't see any questions on the chat uh, any any anything that you want to say comments Okay, uh, so if we are just trying to get a grasp, okay, yeah, uh, Samuel has a question, but before Samuel, uh, if uh, Pratik, uh, if you, if you're able to answer, how are you doing? How's your nose? I remember um, on one of the calls, you know, there was a prophetic word. Uh, good morning, ma'am. Yeah. Good morning. Yes, ma'am, it's uh, completely all right, ma'am. So that from that day, Again, like I felt like uh, after two days, I felt the same thing. <clears throat> but uh, in my spirit, I felt like I should uh, have faith in that, that I have completely received. And the devil may feel that it is not for you. It, it was not for you and all. And again, I was in faith, ma'am. So I, I could receive it. But uh, it's almost been one month. So I'm completely all right from that. Wow. wow. Praise God. Praise God. You know, thank you so much uh, for sharing that. And you know, that's what God's power does. So we just uh, release and then God takes over uh, from yes, there. Thank you. Yeah. God bless you. And uh, we, we continue to pray that, you know, you'll be strong and healthy. Yeah. All right. Uh, Samuel, please go ahead. Your question. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Um, Pastor, um, um, so I'm... Um, um, I guess I'm trying to understand um, the reason or the overall purpose of um, kind of un looking at um, the apostolic, like doing the study on apostles. So um, at one level, you know, uh, looking at the uh, apostles of the Bible and looking at their lives and how they function. So, so that, that bit I, I understand. Uh, but I'm also looking at is the outcome like one of the expected outcome is it that um, I think uh, the, all, the 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 part that I'm struggling with is uh, like modern day apostles. So it, it's uh, you know like do we have modern day apostles? Like can we call people apostles? Um, and so, uh, function wise, it seems like, like every believer could be an apostle, you know, function wise to, you know, care, take care of the church, to, uh, to kind of, uh, herald God's word and to kind of reveal God's word, pray. And, um, but, but just that the title, I mean, it's, I think at the bit that I'm struggling is like, how much of the weightage is on the title like in in some sense like i i am like i don't see a great value of calling like putting a title like apostle so and so apostle sam or apostle this and apostle like it it just becomes a mere title uh, so so instead of just looking at this this whole study of like what can a believer do and then looking at you know uh, okay the apostles and the thing they did that they did this and we all believers can do this um and this is apostolic work versus you know uh, like these are all, all the things that an apostle does and if you're doing this you can be called apostle so i think the bit that i'm struggling with is uh, like people do people still use titles and and is one of the expected outcome of the story i mean of this course is that we do this course we understand this course and then we reach a place where we think uh, that it's okay to use that title, you know, in, uh, in, in front of us. So I think that that's the bit that I'm struggling. Thank you. Mm. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Sam. So a couple of questions uh, in, in what you were saying. So one question is, uh, uh, 
like are there apostles today can we call people apostles answer is yes because that's how we began both our um, uh, prophetic uh, topic as well as the apostolic topic where we said that we are living in the times where god is restoring restoring the fivefold ministry offices and the anointings of the fivefold ministry offices at all levels so we are going to see more and more of that happen so if we agree with that obviously you know as part of that anointing is also the office so can we call people prophet so and so apostle so and so yes okay uh, based on but just on the on the fa fact that um, you know they are um, proven as an apostle or a prophet okay so answer simple answer to that question is yes very much so how does this why are we learning about this uh, is what you're asking we are learning about this because god is doing this in our time and we have to um, uh, pick it up we have to identify what god is doing through his people through the church and also understanding the features of a certain anointing um, helps us function better helps us support it when we see another person moving in it okay so uh, that is why i need to have the understanding Other, otherwise what happens is i i might miss i might miss or i might misunderstand uh you know uh, uh, if god is releasing it through a certain person so i'm just giving one example okay so um, recently i met with this one uh, lady she is part of a church very much planted in the church for many years faithful believer in the church and all uh, but then you know she has this uh, some apostolic grace over her ministry um that you know she will talk to somebody and the door will just open and some new opportunity will come up something un unthought of uh, will be possible you know suddenly um uh, like you know she she comes up with uh, um somehow she connects with people uh, and then they i mean i i'll just put it in simple ways uh, she meets with uh, pastors you know at at the grassroots level and she has this beautiful ability to connect those pastors with uh, other uh, established pastors in, in the city and somehow you know through that connection uh, there is a, a support going on from you know, the established pastors to those new pastors so amazing work amazing work that god is doing through her life it's all very apostolic it's all very apostolic now uh, i also know the pastor uh, of uh, this particular church but the good thing is he understands the apostolic so she is encouraged to keep doing these things it's not looked at as a hey, look at this person you know she's going and i you need to be within the church you know be an usher or be a worship leader or be a media presentation team person or a sound uh, crew person that is enough you know what is this what are you doing uh, trying to understand the needs of uh, you know village pastors and all. so thankfully he understands the apostolic anointing he, he understands this whole thing about you know um opening new doors uh, uh, opening new territories for the kingdom of god it looks very different it does not look like what we saw in the new testament but you see a pastor can then encourage and say wow and you're doing a great job come on do this now we'll come to all this later sam and i, I think then you will you will know why we are learning about these things you see in the modern times um our new territories could be uh, in business our new territories could be in media our new territories could be i don't know you know uh, music arts entertainment believers going and taking those territories uh, imparting a kingdom principles kingdom standards kingdom power in those places uh, that's very apostolic now if i don't understand that i would i would be the first one to stand up and say hey what are you all doing you know come on just pack your bags become a missionary you have to go to uh, villages and you know walk on the streets and give tracts and that's the only way you can be apostolic not necessary Okay. we can we can uh, bring the kingdom in different ways and so 
please bear with me i do know that uh, the understanding of the apostolic in our minds as a class is only sort of becoming uh, clearer very slowly okay so um, uh, yeah uh, hopefully by the end of this this course you will know exactly why we are discussing this i hope that helps sam yes yes pastor thank you okay <laughs> okay yeah thank you thank you yeah if your daughter understands it already that that's amazing <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah thanks so thank you uh, say uh, i see your hand raised yeah, I, I, I i i just wanted to make a comment based on all you're saying in, in other words what you're saying is it's not necessary that a person could be called to be an apostle but the apostolic anointing of um starting stuff new like um uh treading into new territories new new um new areas in life you know starting out something for god could be upon a believer and not necessary that that person is called an apostle called to be an apostle but just like the prophetic anointing over a ministry but not called to be a prophet basically that that's what you're trying to point out to us right bang on that's what i'm saying thank you yep thank you thank you so yes uh, then when we recognize if somebody is called into the office of a prophet wonderful then that person can be called as an apostle uh, nothing wrong with it Uh, you know if people are called as apostles but then again you know here at apc we we um we don't really you know uh, title is good title is good but title is more of a function so title should not become an identity of an individual so we kind of keep it that way so here people even address uh, you know pastors and leaders by their name which is okay which is totally fine but uh, can somebody in the office of a prophet uh, or an office of an apostle be called prophet apostle yes there is nothing wrong with that uh, yeah so let me leave it at that uh, moving on here to the next chapter uh good uh, discussion is moving in the right direction so uh shaping of an apostle is what the chapter here talks about so this is with regard to uh, an individual who is called into the office of a of an apostle okay somebody who is called into the office of an apostle so it's much more than a believer releasing the apostolic anointing or a person like i mentioned that example no of a of a particular lady uh, she's not an apostle she hasn't planted any churches uh, you know she doesn't uh, teach god's word you you don't see many of the features of uh, the apostolic that we discussed so far but yes there are one or two that um, uh, seem to be quite strong things like making connections and you know uh, finding new opportunities like like that and all the time uh, you know i've known her for years and it's it it keeps happening in her life and it's amazing so there is the um release of the apostolic anointing but she's not an apostle we cannot call her an apostle but the ones who are called as apostles uh we're going to talk a little bit about the process that god uses you know to uh establish them and uh position them for their ministry it's very similar to um, uh what we talked about for a prophet you know a prophet is a, a prophet is uh, trained in obscurity remember we said that um a prophet is trained in obscurity a prophet um god works on the character of the prophet because it's very important you know integrity strength of character because the anointing is there and the anointing is pure but the question here is is the vessel that carries the anointing pure enough uh, to bring glory to god you know through the release of that anointing and that is why you know god uh, god is not in a hurry you know we say that a lot here at apc like god is not in a hurry he lets people go through the process so that they will be prepared for the ministry that god has for them you know through their life um so talking about the uh, apostle there is a growth and development uh, that one sees 
there is the apostolic commissioning commissioning is when uh, someone is um, released into uh, you know the the work as an apostle uh, apostolic grace which is to increase you know, there is the anointing but you know we can also increase in the grace that comes through that anointing so uh, that would in simple um, terms it would mean that that anointing is we we are learning to to release that more and more through our lives okay so uh, sometimes we we say things like oh this person is really um he has grown um as a pastor or he has grown as a prophet uh, so what is happening you know there is that anointing but the application of that anointing it's becoming smoother more mature um greater so you know we describe it in all those ways so the apostolic grace begins to increase on a, per, a person's life and then they start doing the apostolic ministry so then you know you might have them uh, planting churches you might have them teaching the word you might have them moving in signs wonders miracles you might have them governing um, churches you might uh, have them you know administrating over churches so the ministry is quite obvious to see that oh wow look at this this person through his life uh, you know all this is taking place and uh, uh, the body of christ is so strengthened by it uh, and from then you know we might be comfortable to call that person an apostle you know the title usually comes in uh, at the end once you see the release of the anointing through the individual's life so one such person in a scripture is uh, apostle paul um, you might have already you know learned about um his life journey in other courses but i'm you know quickly going to go over it again over here so as uh, we are aware at age 33 he um uh, had an encounter with jesus on the road to damascus and that's when he became a believer um, or you know you want to say he was saved um and then later we we see that and but the thing about paul's life is that at that very time god told him that he is called as an apostle you know to the gentiles so he knew his calling so you could take it as a um, uh, like he had that awareness that hey this is this is what i need to be doing with my life and this is my life assignment then initially 3 years you see paul uh, spending in the same region damascus arabia he starts preaching the gospel um the references are in our notes you know galatians and acts so you could look that up so he goes around uh, preaching goes around um, uh, you know um uh, clarifying the questions that people have so he he, he was uh, quite clear or on salvation and about the fact that Jesus is the messiah so he went ahead doing the ministry but he was not accepted the reason being you know people thought that he was pretending uh, and so they were scared to accept him as a genuine minister of the gospel so 3 years went by uh, in this way there was also a lot of opposition and uh, uh, his opposers wanted to kill him so he had to escape uh, at the end of these 3 years and we see that for 15 days he then went to um Jerusalem over there he didn't really meet with um, the apostles as well because they were also skeptical about uh, you know this this persecutor turned uh, preacher uh, so peter apparently spent time with um, paul and that was that uh, after which he went to tarsus syria and cilicia that's the place where he spent 13 years of his life and then suddenly he comes back on the scene uh, in acts 11 in 11 when barnabas goes and brings him he introduces him to um uh, the uh, jerusalem leaders and then you know he uh, is taken to antioch to help with the ministry there in in preaching and teaching so that's where we see paul come and start off his ministry so he is doing this teaching ministry um leadership uh, is is seen uh, upon his life because then you know they go to uh, yeah anyway uh, won't go into the details so uh, we see him ministering in the church of antioch then acts 13 is the place where um uh, god's holy spirit speaks to the leaders of the church and asks them to set aside barnabas and saul 
for the work of the ministry, which is to go into new territories and preach the gospel. So then from Acts 13, you know, he starts uh, doing this. He goes from city to city and he, um, you know, um, preaches the gospel, establishes churches. And then you also see him, you know, going around, strengthening the churches that were set up. So uh, all these things are seen um, in, in and through Paul's ministry. Now, what we want to emphasize here is you, you notice that the 13 years where uh, they're not talked about. So what what exactly was Paul doing during that time? We have no idea. Um, and later on, you know, three years, he tries to minister and then he is in Antioch. So everything put together for about um, 17 years. You know, it's not so much of a, um, you know, Paul is not not even recognized as an apostle. You don't see anybody addressing him as an apostle, not even Barnabas or the leaders in Jerusalem. So you see, again, the is he anointing there? Yes, very much. Because on day one, when the encounter happened, that anointing was upon Paul's life. But here he is you know, doing all other things. But what is God trying to do? God is grooming the individual, very similar to what we said for a prophet. Because one is that we grow in the grace or the capacity of the anointing over our lives. You know, it just gets better as you, you are pursuing it. But on the other hand, God is interested in the character of the person. So, you know, what are the hard knocks that Paul went through? We don't know. But I'm sure he must have been to the school of hard knocks, you know, where God must have shaped his his uh, uh, character. He would have shaped uh, the person that he became, that he was capable after 17 years to handle the ministry. Because, you know, it wasn't easy. There was persecution everywhere. Mm, there, there was, uh, uh, you know, uh, the preaching of God's word, bringing the right instruction to the churches, appointing leaders, so many things that Paul needed to do. But there was a preparation that God took him through. There were also these silent 13 years. They're called as the silent years of Paul's life, where I'm sure you know, God would have um, shaped him as required for the purpose of the ministry. So the, the bottom line is, you know, no matter what the ministry no matter what the capacity, maybe we're called into the offices or you know any other capacity, but God takes us through preparation, training. God is not in a hurry. And so we must cooperate with God for what he wants to release through our lives. Okay, so uh, with that, I will stop right here. We're at the end of um, the session. Let's pray and close. We will pick up from where we stopped tomorrow. Uh, anyone? Uh, would like to lead in prayer, please. Okay, who would that be? All right. Um, I know, Sister Rupa. Are you okay to pray? No, I'm nice for that. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, sister. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your presence in our midst. Thank you for your teaching this morning, Lord, to understand the apostolic calling and the work they have done as a foundation for the church, Lord God. We thank and praise you. And thank you for the anointing over our lives that is correcting us, changing us, molding us, and perfecting us. Lord God, we thank and praise you. Thank you, Lord, to Father, look into prophetic ministry also, Lord God. As we all gather at thy feet this morning, thank you for your impartation. Thank you for our madam who has taught us, Lord God. Bless us all, bind us together with more of your purpose, understanding, and willingness to accomplish your purpose in our lives, Lord. Be glorified in our midst in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank Amen. Thank you.
thank you so much sister and thank you everyone god bless you have a wonderful day we shall connect tomorrow see you then bye for now thank you ma'am thank you pastor god bless you.